This year is 2020, and we are celebrating Glad Day's 50th anniversary. It's been in different manifestations. It was like a lot of the queer bars of, you know, decades old, they were sort of behind closed doors, sort of by word only, and that was for safety. This space, we're on a major street, there's huge windows, people can look in and see exactly what we're doing. We're not hiding, we're actually trying to shove it in their faces. The types of events that we hold really foster community and um, relationship building. So we try to encourage people to get to know each other. Um, we have a bit more of a private space in the back and that um, allows for more like personal, private conversations. We don't ask questions, we don't charge for it. The fact that we don't charge most of the groups that we host here is very important. Hard under capitalism, but I think still, as long as we have the space, we should be using it to offer free opportunities for people to foster art and community. Thank you, Glad Day, for the space. Thank you to every single one. It's hard to exist as an independent bookshop in a city. We've seen many of them disappearing. And that's not just a Glad Day problem, that's a problem we see with all independent businesses in Toronto, and we can see them all shutting down one by one, unfortunately, and it's very sad, but what you see are the, are the queer spaces close first. We've seen a lot of queer-owned bars and clubs disappear, we don't have many spaces left, so this space is vitally important. Um, it's easy to take that for granted working here every day for two and a half years. You know, you just forget sometimes how radical and important a space like this is because it really doesn't exist anywhere else in the world and you're just coming to work, right? But then you meet somebody who walks in, you know, and they're not even from far away necessarily. They're from small town Ontario. They're from an hour up north and they walk in for the first time and you see their face light up and they're, they're amazed and they feel seen and they, see, and they feel represented and they feel you know, immediately comfortable and then they look at the staff and they see that the staff are sort of being ref reflect them or the people that they've seen online or whatever. You can sort of take a load off, like pretend like, you know, you didn't just come from a really shitty, like homophobic work environment and just be around your people for like an hour and that I think is worthwhile. <laughs>